Hi, I'm Ruby Rapp, and you're watching Stone Shakespeare. The series where I get high and attempt to retell William Shakespeare's works. As for drugs, well, drugs are bad. You shouldn't do drugs. Okay, that about wraps up my introduction. Today we're going to be talking about Titus and Rhodes. I'm going to educate y'all, but don't use this as like an educational resource because I don't plan to analyze this play whatsoever. <laughs> so the year is... Ancient times. And the location is the magnificent city of Rome. And the play opens on the emperor of Rome who's sitting in his palace and he's all like, Yo, people of Rome. I am so great. I am so great. Everybody loves me. I am so great. And Titus comes along and he says, Great emperor. I have won you this war that you've been fighting against the Goths. And you know what, not only that, but I've brought you like the best present ever. And at which point Titus presents Tamara, the queen of Goths and her three sons, Chiron, Demetrius, and some other guy. And then, her firstborn son is killed, and Rome rejoices, and Tamara is devastated. And the Emperor, who's been watching Tamara this whole time, decides that she's too good-looking to be a prisoner, and he decides to make her his wife. And then Chiron and Demetrius, the surviving sons, get promoted from shackled prisoners of war to princes of Rome. Titus is like, you're the problem of the emperor now, so have fun. <laughs> and the next we see of them is the two of them running around the castle fighting over Lavinia, Titus's daughter, who they both think that they're in love with. And then out of the shadows jumps this guy called Aaron, who happens to be <laughs> Tamara's, uh, you know, unwilling servant from a foreign land. Know what I mean? And Aaron's like, yo, dummies, why are you fighting over this chick? Why don't you just, like, share her? <laughs> and Chiron and Dimitri was like, alright. <laughs> so the next day, Titus and his sons are out in the woods and they're hunting deer, I guess. And Tamara and Aaron are out hiding in the bushes, watching everything. And along comes Lavinia and her, I believe he was fiance at the time. I don't think they were married yet. Anyway, so along they come, they're walking through the trees, hand in hand, just, you know, strolling along like lovers do when out pops Demetrius and he's like, this is for my mum. And as he's doubled over in pain, out jumps Chiron and also stabs him. And Bassianus basically keels over and dies. And Paul Lavinia is standing there like, oh no, my husband's dead. How could things possibly get any worse for me right now. So then Tamara comes along and she's like, as you, you know, reward for you killing this man, go and have fun with, with Lavinia. And Lavinia's like, what? No, please, Tamara, you can't let them do this, like woman to woman. Like, come on now, let's, let's be reasonable. And Tamara's like, Nah. <laughs> so poor Lavinia, poor, poor Lavinia, gets brutally raped by both Chiron and Demetrius. And that's not even the worst part of it. After they're done 
with her, they decide that they're going to cut off both her hands so that she can't write down or point out who it was who raped her. And then they're like, well, she might be able to tell people. So they cut out her tongue and now she can never tell anyone or point out who ruined her or not. That was so intense. I like can't even with this place. So then while all these terrible things are happening to poor Lavinia, Aaron runs off and he goes to Titus's sons and he says, Yo boys! Boys, there's, there's something terrible in this pit that I found. It looks like a dead guy, and I swear to God, that dead guy is Bastianus. You, you better come see. So, off they all go to the pit, and I think it's Quintus. Quintus is looking down into the pit, and he's like, Oh my God, there, there is a dead guy in there, but I can't really see who it is. And then he kind of like tumbles into the pit and then his brother uh what the hell's his name martin sorry martius is like oh let me help you out of this this pit brother and so he goes to help his brother out of the pit and either he falls in or aaron pushes him i forget they both end up in the pit and then aaron's like ha ha I'm out of here! <laughs> and Aaron runs to the Emperor and Aaron's like, Yo, Emperor, I just caught the two sons of Titus red-handed murdering poor Bassianus. And Titus is like, No, no way. My sons are like great guys. They would never do something like that so the emperor comes down he's like oh my god it's true it's true the evidence is right before me take them away and so poor martius and quintus are carted away to jail then at this point lavinia has been found by her uncle and she's taken home to titus who is just like beside himself over what's happened to his daughter, as any parent would be. So then, eventually, a messenger comes in. No, it's not, it's Aaron. <laughs> Sorry. So Aaron comes in and he says, Titus, you know, the Emperor said to me that if you cut off your hand, mate, we're gonna drop all the charges against your sons and they'll go free. And so he does. He full on cuts off his hand and puts it on a platter and sends it to the Emperor. And the Emperor's like, what the fuck is this? Why are you sending me your hand, bro? Like, it's too late. At this point, Titus is just like, broaching the paths of insanity. He doesn't know what to do with himself. He is just a broken man. He can't take any more grief at this point. So he goes outside and he starts writing letters to the gods, pleading them for help, some, some, you know, change in fortunes, than anything. And he tapes these letters, or ties them rather, I don't think they had tape in ancient Rome, ties them to a bunch of arrows and he starts shooting them up into the stars. And Tamara is like skulking around in the shadows watching him and she's like ha 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 got him he's nuts there's our revenge is almost complete and she decides she's going to dress up as a character called vengeance and she's gonna make her two sons Chiron and Demetrius dress up as characters called rape and murder and they're gonna go to Titus and like trick him. <laughs> so they dress up and they come to Titus who's now retired to his study office, whatever it was called in those days. And 
she appears to him and she's like, Ooh, Titus, it's me, vengeance, and I am here to help you. <laughs> These are my minions, rape and murder. Tell us what you would have us do to help you. And Titus is like, I fucking know it's you, Tamara. So Titus is like, you know what? I'm gonna play along with this moron trick and see what I can make out of it. So Titus is like, okay, vengeance. You know what? I've got a way you can help me. Go into the Emperor's Palace. There's a lady in there who looks like exactly like you. Go and kill her. And then report back to me so I know that you like did it. He has a servant there and he's like, all right, yo servant, we have like a, a big job to do right now. And you're gonna help me do it. So when these two clowns come back in here, the ones dressed up like a bunch of idiots, I want you to grab them and tie them up really tight. So next we see Titus setting up a great feast and in comes the emperor and Titus is like, oh, this is for you emperor, you know, in good faith and stuff. <laughs> and the Emperor sits down and is like, oh, alright, bring in my wife. Have her come and sit down and enjoy this feast. So Tamara comes in and they're eating and they're enjoying their meal and Tamara's like, man, this is so good. Where's Chiron and Demetrius? Bring them in. They should enjoy this feast as well. And then Titus indicates down to this pie that they're currently indulging in and he's like, there. There are your accursed sons in the pie! The Emperor's like, What? Fuck you! Fuck you! So then Titus stabs Tamara, and then the Emperor stabs Titus, and then Lucius stabs the Emperor, and basically this, this lovely feast is just like covered in dead people. <laughs> Oh yeah, and by the way, I forgot to mention that Titus kills Lavinia in front of everyone. And the Emperor's like, yo, what the f dude, why are you doing that? And Titus is like, well, she's, she's ruined now, she's no good, she should, she just should die. <laughs> and then the play ends with, um, what's his face? Um, who are we talking about? <laughs> what are we talking about? Titus. It ends with Titus, his brother being exiled out in the wilderness and just being like, well, this sucks. And that's the end of the play. <laughs> Thanks for watching this episode of Stone Shakespeare. I hope you got some information about the play and maybe had a few laughs. And if not, well, fuck you. I'm just joking. Love you. Bye.